we are good at that. We Indians and we Nigerians. I'm saying we Nigerians. Oh my God. <laughs> This is Benny. And this is Dhru. And today we are going to react to a video called Father's Land, uh, Indians in Nigeria. It's a short documentary by Devesh Uba. If you like this documentary, by the way, guys, please subscribe to his channel and support him. And let's go ahead with this. If you just read the newspapers or go and look online, you will never come here. You'll be so scared. It's not easy to, to really make a sustainable, strong, solid business. When you're back in India, people ask you, I mean, how can you stay there? You know, it's so risky. This is the story of finding home in one of the most challenging countries in the world to live in. That's my wife Zara and that's me. We have been living in Nigeria since 2013. Our original plan was to be here for a year but now it has been six years already. Despite Nigeria's image and challenges, hundreds and thousands of Indians live here, some even for decades. I was therefore interested to know how so many Indians came to Nigeria and what this place means to them. Certainly, commercial, the commercial relationship between India and Nigeria, uh, had, there is solid evidence that by the early 19th to mid uh, early to mid 19th century that you know it grew exponentially from a few small traders it grew exponentially thus that by the end of the 19th century there was a very well established uh, Indian commercial presence in Lagos. I'm a fifth generation family member in our business in Nigeria. I'm the fourth generation of my family in Nigeria. In fact I'll be here in Nigeria for 26 years now in January. By the 1890s they were settled enough to be recorded as being a living and resident in Lagos. I work at a company called Chelarams PLC. It's a family business set up by my great-great-grandfather. We've been operating in Nigeria since 1923 and I am currently the chief executive officer. Uh, I've, I think my great-granddad came here, it was around the 1930s and then my granddad followed, my mom followed. My dad eventually came here. Um, I was born in India, but I pretty much came here right after I was born. And both my younger brothers were born here as well, and I've been here since then. By 1910, 1914, there was now a change. The big boys, as it were, now came in. The Cindy, the big, great Cindy merchants. There were seven big firms, but the two most prominent, were Chanrai and Telerams, made their presence felt in Nigeria from the 1920s. Uh, our business started in 1923. My great-great-grandfather is a textiles trader based out of Chennai, which was then called Madras in India. He was exporting textiles at that time as well and found a demand in Nigeria. The 1940s, the post-Second World War era, um, saw a massive economic boom, which they took advantage of. Into the 19. 40s and 1950s, we had set up a chain of department stores, and I think at its peak, we had about 14 stores across the country, all over in the north, central belt, east. In our department stores, we sold textiles, we made garments, we made suits, we sold shoes, and then we also branched out into toiletries, personal care, groceries, electronics, bicycles, uh, and then just anything that was generally required. From the trading origins, the, 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 the initial period in which there were mere merchants, slowly a lot of these companies now veered into manufacturing. You know, but 
Their focus wasn't heavy industrial manufacturing, like or overly, they weren't overly ambitious, they kept it simple. On the side, so in, in addition to the retail stores, uh, we also invested in industry. Uh, we invested in mineral water, we invested in suitcase manufacturing, white goods manufacturing, like refrigerators and uh, other items like that. Uh, I think we even had a foray into mining uh, and many untold businesses I've never even heard of. I'm the managing director for Ocean Trans and Trading. So we are a Gari manufacturing company. And I've been in Africa since 2006. So that is okay. Height is? So Me and my wife decided to move here in early 2011. And the first reaction we got from people and some family was that, why Nigeria? And me and my wife always told them, that why not Nigeria? I have family living here, we have a business here, and I want to grow the business. So for us, the transition and the decision was very easy that we want to move. <laughs> I think there is something about like Nigeria where once you've been here, you've grown up here and it, it pulls you back. When I graduated from university, I came back just to visit my parents without, without the intention to join the business that year. But I went to the office and some projects happened. I just kind of fell into it and I never left. So I told my dad, if you want to get me to come to Nigeria, you need to get me engaged. So he eventually relented and he got us engaged. That's how I got here and I think I really enjoyed the college life here. Unilag was really good. I really made some good friends. Most of the kids were here at that time. I mean, nobody was sent to India to study for college or anything. University was quite nice here. Professors were from India too. Quite a few of them, yeah. Work-wise, I don't think any country offers that kind of excitement other than Nigeria. So work-wise is a great place, but personally to live, it's, a, it's not an easy place to be. And then we reached Nigeria in 2012. Our initial expectation, just like any city, you move to a big city, you feel whether you'll make friends easily, how will you adjust to the city. But to our surprise, it was so easy here. People are so welcoming, people are so nice. We made friends in no time and we adjusted like I never expected we will. For me, it had been a great experience working with local Nigerians. Nigeria has, uh, has a different image to the outside world. But as an engineer, it was very satisfying for me to uh, understand that uh, an average uh, young Nigerian engineer is very skilled and ha has very good hands-on experience. And even with the, let's say, less than four or five year experience, these boys have done a wonderful work for us in setting up the plant, in commissioning the plant, in coming out of various problems which we had while we were stabilizing the plant. I would think, I'm presuming the person who's making the video, he is an Indian Nigerian transplant and these are his friends maybe he's interviewing. Another thing I did like uh, that he interviewed two people, two different people and they said one said it's difficult and one said it's an easy transition. So I like that he showed both aspects that for some people it's difficult, for some it's easier. Also another thing I noticed is like uh, in every big city, we wondered whether we will have, we will make new friends or not. The next shot that I saw was them hanging out with other Indians. And that's my question, like, uh, you know, do you have Nigerian friends? How many of Nigerian friends do you have? And is that a harder aspect than making Indian friends? Because making Indian friends in a place where there is a big Indian population is relatively easy. I mean, that's not that difficult you band together with your people from your own country because you speak the same language and it's your own common language. But I wonder if it's uh, as easy to make friends with Nigerian locals and if they even try to do that, what ways do they go about to do it? Another one thing I noticed, which is kind of funny that I noticed it, but like they showed some uh, scenes of people working, cutting wood or 
you know even those people were dressed so well like they had the most <laughs> colorful beautiful clothes you know so i was very impressed by that what i find is that i mean after the second world war and even before that like these indians they moved to nigeria and how they utilized the situation like after the second world war it was a time when all economy economies were just you know facing problems now in problems you find the solutions and that's what these guys did and i guess that's the key to their success to their ongoing success because they've been there for generations i i think one of them said fifth generation of them said fourth generation to be able to be successful for such a long time evidently you have to find your solutions in the problems i mean you take those problems as opportunities and you make the best out of it and i also loved how you know the diversify putting your money back into making money is probably the best thing to do they took the money that they gained out of those local stores and they started then hmm. getting into manufacturing water. yes and eventually manufacturing and you know i just recently saw a video where they were saying that if i mean i'm not an expert in economics although i've studied it a bit but the thing is that if you want your economy to grow and a country to have a good economic growth you need more and more local manufacturers the more localized your manufacturing is the more money will the country make as a whole so these days did that and that was also a very very smart move when the businesses flourish evidently uh, top and bottom both flourish both sides you take raw material those guys flourish if you're into manufacturing and if you have good manufacturing with a local cost and a local demand then evidently i mean the people who are retailing they will flourish and evidently the customers will get it for a reasonable price this is something i i, I really appreciate about what they've been doing another thing i'd like to say is that these guys they settled in nigeria and now they feel like it is you know home so basically home is where the heart is you know you you start living in a place you start earning over there you start making friends over there right and that becomes your home because that's where you are now based and you realize that this is the best life that i would want to live and this is where i'm getting to do it so that becomes your home it doesn't matter really where your roots are sometimes and in another sense i would like to say that nigeria and india they have similar. the same kind of what very similar i mean even the shots they showed if yes. the cars and the aerial shots i'm like is this india if True. they wouldn't have clarified you would have realized but also home is where the heart is but also it shows nigerians are very welcoming because it could True. be a hostile environment many people who go to europe face a lot of racism not all of europe but there are some countries that people face racism so this is a transplant friendly country right. kudos and to them as well the locals yes and another thing is giving a chance to freshers you know like this person who say that some engineers who had only 4 or 5 years of experience they were able to give them the best of services and they help them build the com- company so that is also something that you know often at times we do not realize the importance and the talent that freshers might have so that is something that that helps again build the economy in the us like it's the, that irony that even for a starting position you need a few years of experience how do you get few years of experience without a starting position and the fact that this guy uh, this person did that and realized probably he has a knack for it too that right. he realizes that this fresher has that drive that he will go above and beyond to make up for the years of experience that he doesn't have and that's a bit of a risk like these people are big risk takers so in True. all these things you three you see three levels of risk right going to another country opening a business from scratch and then giving an opportunity to freshers like and that's right. why they say no risk no reward so it could go either way really definitely one thing why i feel that indians feel so comfortable in nigeria i mean in the beginning of the tech documentary which is mentioned that nigeria is considered to be fifth among the world's most dangerous countries but then again there are so many similarities in india we have the good things we have the bad things and same in nigeria has it too when it says you go away from nigeria it pulls you back i've heard such things about islands you know i'm a big island enthusiast i love islands and uh, because islands have their localized beautiful unique culture i was seeing a documentary on madagascar and there's so many people who went uh, or tuvalu even 
who went to Hong Kong and France and whatnot and still came back. I think there must be some kind of a community feel where your heart glows, your, uh, it's food for your soul. You feel more at home somehow there. And there are countries or there are jobs in which you have a lot of money but no time. And then you have jobs in which you have all the time but you don't make any money. But Nigeria is probably the only place I, I have seen where you make a lot of money in various ways and you have a lot of time because of the structure of how things work here. My life here is really rewarding. I can do anything I put my mind to, any, any hope and dream I have, anything that I want to do more of, there is an outlet for that here. Honestly, there was a point of time where I didn't see myself coming back here, or at least I wasn't really, wasn't on the cards for me. But I've been back, it's been three years, and I mean, I've been, uh, life's been good to me here. I mean, it's been good. With my dad, I've lived in Kaduna, uh, Abir Kota, of course. Then with my husband in Enugu, uh, Onicha, Burhakot, Wari, Boni Island, Abuja, Lagos, of course, and we lived a little while in Forkados. I enjoyed every city I think that I've stayed in. I think I enjoyed uh, Abuja the most, but I enjoyed Wari too, and Puthakot, and Enugu, and in fact, all the places that I've been in, yeah. Growing up here, it was, it was like you were growing up in a community of Indians. We are always like getting together, like, I mean, Despite being so far away from India, festivals like Holi, Diwali, um, the Navratri period, the Dandia, it's like religiously happening over here as well. I mean, Navratri starts and like Dandia is going to happen all the nine days. Ten years has gone by very fast. We've done a lot of different projects, investments, um, businesses that we've opened and closed within that space of time. I know that from our family's history that we've been here for 90 years and we've had business in other countries that if Nigeria was not a land of opportunity, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, Nigeria is indeed, it's a land of opportunity. There is a country which has a deficit in almost everything starting from power, roads, water, electricity, food. So for a businessman trying to in cash on such a large population, it's definitely the land of opportunity. And I firmly believe you can probably be the richest man in the world living and operating only in Nigeria. Indians in particular that I know of uh, have, have been extremely successful in various industries. And you know, the industries go across the board. They've done well in construction, they've done well in catering, they've done well in retail, pharma. They've done well in a, a plethora of industries. So overall, if I say it is a land of opportunity, it has always been a land of opportunity. Nigeria has given me my home. It's given me so much. One, it's given my husband and me a life, gave us our two daughters, wonderful friends, and people here are so nice. I mean, amazingly nice, I would say. The land of challenges, too. It's not easy to, to really make a sustainable, so strong, solid business. Uh, there are a lot of stories of people that have made a way with a ton of cash. Um, came up with some great ideas and um, or got some lucrative deals and managed to make some good money very quickly. But I think the, the biggest, the bigger um, appeal of Nigeria is the long-term potential. As I began exploring the various challenges in Nigeria, I realized a special connection emerging, one that represents what this country means to these Indians. It is not easy to operate here because of the, the deficits or the infrastructure issues. Plus, uh, also, the, the system does not support, really support entrepreneurship. 
So you are more or less on your own. Doing business in Nigeria comes with its own challenges, uh, but it's rewarding as hell. In the last five, six years when we've been working here, there have been some really tough times. Uh, there was a major recession, the greatest in the last maybe 20, 25 years in Nigerian economy. Currency was not available, markets were down, people lost so much money. But for me, the great thing was that my mentor has always been my dad and I work with him day in, day out. He's very supportive and he's, he guides me a lot. I rightly estimated the opportunity, but I hugely underestimated the task. And that's where Papa really came and helped. And his inputs are just very, very valuable. So he's operating a lot more out of fear and insecurity that he doesn't want to see his son fail. This is uh, the biggest gari making plant we have set up in whole of Africa, you might say. He involved me in uh, scouting uh, technology for this uh, process. So then having done that work for him, I was uh, duty bound to take it further. You might say that once I scouted the equipment on his behalf, this became my baby. It's a great feeling to be around him all day and to learn from him even now. Where we have gone as a company and individually, what I have achieved wouldn't have been possible if he was not around. So together, I think we make a great team. He came here around March, right in time for the arrival of the equipment. He was involved in the commissioning. He was also equally clueless because he has also not done anything like that, but at least he was less clueless than me. He may not know what to do, but he always knows when something is not right. And as I grew up here and watched my dad work in our business and alongside my grandfather and other relatives, I always saw myself as part of that story. I like to say this when people ask me um, how much Nigeria means to me. I say if India is the motherland, then Nigeria is the fatherland. Um, it's pretty much, I mean, what, I'm here because at some point some, some father figure in my family decided to come here and it just, it just kind of makes sense to me in a, almost in a poetic sort of way. Poetic indeed. While talking to people who've spent a long time in this country, I learned how most of them had the opportunity to live and work in developed countries, but still chose to live in Nigeria. It is the land of their fathers and will always be their home. This kind of made me teary. <laughs> Actually, the, I don't know what, it struck a chord in me. Kudos to their business acumen. Like when he said my father didn't know exactly what he was doing, but he knew when something was not right. That is something, right? That is a businessman in his genes. And that's why they're flourishing, even with the recession going on. And I, I loved how he said that, although, uh, you know, there's been a 25% contraction or something and economy has suffered a lot, but I get to work with my father. That's a very brave and a very positive perspective that despite the problems, he's finding the good things in that. I would like to point out that that guy said that there are many countries where you can you know, earn a lot of money, but you don't have enough time. And there are other countries where you have a lot of time, but the money isn't enough. And Nigeria is a balance of both. And I loved how they showed them enjoying that nightlife or playing music, you know, uh, the Navratri festival. So that's a wholesome life. You want balance. Yes. I mean, if you are working passionately, at the end of the day, you want to go back home. You want to do the things that you enjoy doing besides work. I mean, of course, you have some hobbies. You have some dreams. You have some things that you want to do while relaxing. You want to spend time with your family. You want to spend time with your friends. And this is the culture that especially, I mean, everybody in the world would want that. But... We Indians and Nigerians, this is what we love. That's that's the dream life. And this is so representative of the culture over here in India as well, because we love celebrations. That's the beauty of our cultures. And that's why I think Indians and Nigerians merge so very well. Indians are bringing in the resources and economy. Of course, Indians are benefiting, but also Nigeria is benefiting 
because as that guy said, there's so many deficits. And then these courageous Indian businessmen see these opportunities and, and it's a true symbiotic relationship in that yes. sense. Actually, one more thing I do want to point out is that how the outside world's narrative is completely media-based and the media is so biased. I remember the first time I was going to Mexico, I was terrified. What the media shows is not untrue, but that's not the only truth. There's so much more and that might just be 10% of the truth. So not that those things don't exist, but but there's so much more. And that lady, as she was saying, she lived in Abuja. She lived in, I, I don't remember all the place names. Party. Yeah, Port uh, something, right? All those different places. And she said she enjoyed it all. Like she covered such a huge portion of the country yes. and she was fine. Uh, being, yes. being an immigrant, especially, you are an easier target for something. And she was fine. She loved it. What does yes. that tell you, right? That, yes. that the narrative that you hear, like, is not the entirety of things. It's, it's a small percentage of it. This is also a similarity that I find in Indians and Nigerians, that we, we believe in being resourceful, right? In India, we say being jugar. Jugaru. Yes, jugar. That's That's something that I love about Indians and I love about Nigerians, I'm sure that, it, it, you know, we relate over there too, that, okay, well, this is it. You know, this is what you have. Now, what to do with this? It's like yes, my life. resourcefulness. You, you make lemonade or you make lemon pickle or you just sell lemons in four pieces. Do the best out of what you have. And we are good at that. We Indians and we Nigerians. I'm saying we Nigerians. Oh my God. <laughs> Someone once asked me, and I had not processed it in my head myself, why do you enjoy going to developing countries more than developing right. countries? And I think there is more heart, soul, community, and this jugar, and, and a different flavor to developing countries, and, and in a sense, more freedom. Well, I'll give a simple example. In, in Mexico, you can make a makeshift car because you don't have an actual car. Seriously? Yeah, you can, and there are many other countries where you can do that. Maybe not in big cities, though, but in smaller towns, you can do that. Even in uh, rural China, you can do that. And I'm sure in India, you, Indian villages, you can do that. No one's there to govern you and say blah, blah, blah. But in the U.S., you cannot. That, that's the flavor that developing countries have. That's why our countries are so amazing. All right, guys, if you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you're notified every time we upload a new video also actually like our video if you actually liked it share it with friends spread the word and until next time adabo adabo